Boom, we are live, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome to the Nolan Hawkeye Anthony YouTube channel. And I thank all of you for being here, wherever you may be. And of course, however you may be listening. This is going to be the second reaction um, of a certain topic. Uh, and it's not the same exact to topic specifically, but it is centered around Brian Ferentz, the Iowa Hawkeyes, and Charlie Jones' recent departure from the Iowa Hawkeyes. And I also will be bringing in uh, the other Iowa wide receivers who did decide to transfer as well. But before we look into any of that and look at all the wide receivers who have transferred, uh, you know, me talking about Brian Ferentz and his recent promotion uh, and whether he deserved it or not, will things change? All of that stuff. It's really me just diving into all of this. Uh, I do want to mention going to 247hawkeye.com and I do ask you to hit that subscribe button because, well, you'd be helping out a fellow Hawkeye fan, a fellow traveler, so to speak. And well, subscribing makes you feel good. At the very least, like, comment, share. I'll put the Cash App and the PayPal link in the description if you want to help your boy with his coffee habit. Without further ado, let's get into this. Well, uh, one of uh, Twitter's users, uh, he follows me, I follow him, uh, listed the wide receivers who have left the Iowa Hawkeye program recently. You have Calvin Lockett, you have Desmond Hudson, uh, Kayvon Matthews, Tyrone, Tracy's and, Tyrone Tracy, and Charlie Jones. Now, Cal all these guys were, you know, decently rated. Uh, decently recruited, uh, some more than others. I would say Tyrone Tracy and uh, Calvin Lockett were the two highest uh, recruited guys and the highest rated guys on this list. Um, you know, Charlie Jones came to Iowa as a walk-on. Uh, he went to Buffalo first. And I will say that Tyrone Tracy and Charlie Jones are the only two guys who saw significant uh, snaps and quite frankly, not everybody can play. That is just the fact. Not everybody can see the field. Uh, and I'm okay with that. That You will see turnover on any roster due to that just being a fact. Okay? That's first and foremost. But I want to start with uh, Tyrone Tracy before we go to Charlie Jones. I thought last year he was going to have a monster season. I was so behind Tyrone Tracy, the trajectory, what we had seen him do before last season was simply, it, it, it was great. It was great. And there was a lot to be hopeful about. And I thought he was going to take the biggest step forward last year. I thought he was going to have, eight to 1000 yard season last year boy was i wrong so wrong now some of that i'm sure was on tyrone tracy but quite frankly let's be honest here most of that was on brian ferentz if tyrone tracy in one of his young you know younger seasons could get to 580 plus yards receiving then there should have been no reason that he did not get to that last year. And Iowa should have done any, everything in their power to ensure that he at least got 500 yards receiving. He only got 100. He was so far below the 500 that it was incredible. I mean, it was laughable. Some of this is on the quarterback play. There, there are different people who deserve more blame, but more or less everybody deserves blame here, okay? But I got to be honest, and I'm going to show this article that totally changed my thinking on this because my stance on this has been very simple. Brian Ferentz has shown some semblance that he might be able to be a good offensive coordinator, we saw what Iowa did against Ohio State, against USC. You know, there's been glimpses of what he can do as an offensive coordinator. 
and his offense. But by and large, since his first year on campus, Iowa, Iowa's offenses have been going backwards, not forwards. And that's not good. That is not good. And the bottom line is that the quarterbacks can only do what their offensive coordinator trains them to do. And now Brian Ferentz has gotten a promotion. You know what? Let's just read this article, and I'm going to be reacting to this uh, article. I think that this article was fantastic. I, I really, really do. And it states a lot of what I want to say in this video. This is by Alex Hickey of Saturday Tradition. So let's read this real quick. Shock is not an emotion frequently associated with Iowa football. For better or for worse, you know what you're going to get from the Hawkeyes. And more often than not, it's better. There's a reason Kirk Ferentz has headed the program since 1999. And I agree with that, guys. Since 2015, Iowa Simply put, has been tremendous. Iowa is one of the most winningest programs, top 50, top, definitely top 20. And I've showed this in previous videos. Iowa is one of the top 20. I think they might even be top 15 winningest programs since 2015. And they have put tons of guys into the NFL. But when senior wide receiver Charlie Jones announced that he was entering the transfer portal on Wednesday, shock was the most appropriate available response. This is a stunning setback for the Hawkeyes. Jones was Iowa's most exciting receiver, receiving returning dual threat since Tim Dwight. Totally correct. Charlie Jones won the Tim Dwight award. Okay. He was legit. He is to Iowa as Devin Hester was to the late 2000 Chicago Bears. A jolt of special teams electricity who props up an otherwise limp offense. Jones deservedly earned Big Ten Special Teams Return Specialist of the Year in 2021. Considering that Michigan State's Jaden Reed had a pair of return touchdowns, it was a heck of a feat. And the Hester comparison might even undersell what Jones did for Iowa. Hester was limited as a wide receiver. Jones is not. He was third on the Hawkeyes with 323 receiving yards and tied Tyler Laporta. It's Sam Laporta, actually. <laughs> Sam Laporta, that confused me for a second. Sam Laporta with a team high three tubs despite being fifth in receptions. Furthermore, he made quite a big deal of the fact he would be using his extra year of eligibility to run it back with the Hawks. He was also among the handful of players who spoke with the media following Iowa spring scrimmage. The transfer is from beyond left field. Guys, this is totally correct. It is a shock. I would be lying if I said this was not a shock. It hadn't set in for me a couple of days ago when this news first came out, but this is totally a shock. Totally and completely a shock. Charlie Jones decided to forego the NFL in order now, would he have been drafted? I don't know. I think he probably would have been drafted in the sixth or seventh round because of one, I think he would have tested very well at the combine or pro day. And I think he would, would have been one of the best uh, special teams guys in the NFL or in the draft in this last draft. So I think it, there's a good chance he would have been drafted in the sixth or seventh round of the NFL draft. He still decided to come back to the Hawks. Yes, it was to improve his NFL draft stock, but, but all of that being said, he still decided to play for the Hawks. Not only that, but he, the, the Iowa coaching staff felt so strongly about him that they put him as their media, one of their media representatives, media reps. This is a total shock, a total shock. All of that being considered, this is a total shock considering how much Charlie Jones has played, how many stat snaps he's gotten, how much he has, quote unquote, liked Iowa, being at Iowa since stepping on campus. The fact that he was Iowa's media representative. And the fact that he forwent the 
NFL draft in order to come, return to the Hawkeyes. This is a total shock, total shock. Look at this, unfinished business, total shock. Clearly something major must have taken place between January and May for Jones to drop such an unexpected bomb. But maybe it, is, it was as simple as a, as a moment of self-realization. A manifestation of the stinking feeling a receiver gets when he goes through another spring realizing his offensive coordinator is Brian F. and Ference and his quarterbacks can't get it done. I think that that's a reasonable assumption. I really, really do. Brian Ference, an insult to vanilla. Vanilla is a more versatile flavor than it ever gets credit for. So we will not dignify Ferentz offense by comparing it to vanilla. Ooh. Ouch. Ouch. It's more like a communion water minus the transubstantation. Let's see if I said that right. Trans. I think I said it right. Transubstantiation. Transubstantiation. There we go. Man, come on, Nolan. Come on. Transubstantiation. Iowa's 2021 offense was 13th in the Big Ten in total offense, 11th in passing yards per attempt, and 10th in yards per carry. This is, by the way, keep in mind, this is with a all Big Ten second team running back in Tyler Goodson coming back. And even if, you know, teams had more film on him and they, you know, and he maybe wasn't at, as good as we initially thought, still they had a talented running back. And they had some talented backups in Gavin Williams, LaShawn Williams, uh, and uh, Ivory Kelly Martin. Okay. The Hawkeyes were dead last in the Big Ten and won 20th nationally with 16.6 first downs per game. And to be worse than Indiana or Northwestern in any offensive category last season took quite some doing. <laughs> he ain't wrong, guys. He ain't wrong. Naturally, all of that resulted in Ference, the younger, earning a promotion this offseason. Oh, uh -huh. uh -huh. he's now coaching Iowa's quarterbacks in addition to his play calling duty. Let's pause here. Wow. You know, I had never thought about it this way before, and it is totally bizarre. Yeah, even though maybe perhaps it makes sense as far as most quarterback coaches being offensive coordinators. Therefore you needed to make Brian Ferentz the quarterback coach. Even if Brian Ferentz has been good coaching other positions, which I have said, and I want to say that clearly now, I think Brian Ferentz is an okay recruiter, a decent recruiter. And I think he is especially good at coaching on a positional basis as a positional coach, the offensive line and tight ends, but that's it. I think he is an above average position coach with tight ends and offensive line. We've seen that Iowa became tight end. You under Brian Ferentz, but he's a below average offense coordinator. So even if that logically makes sense, that, well, you know, most offensive coordinators are also quarterback coaches. Therefore, we, you know, we get, we're going to give Brian this promotion in order for him to be the best offense coordinator he can be. Even if that makes sense, which is what I told myself. You look back at this. 13th in the Big Ten in total offense. 11th in passing yards per attempt. And 10th in yards per carry? 
only 16.6 first downs per game. And you go, in what world has Brian Ferentz deserved to get a promotion on this Iowa Hawkeye coaching staff? In what world does he deserve to coach the quarterbacks? In what world? I think Brian Ferentz may actually end up being the end of Kirk Ferentz down the line. I hate to say it, but I really do. All right, let's keep reading. If old man Ferentz had hired an experienced quarterback whisperer, perhaps we could expect Spencer Petras or Alex Padilla to take a step forward in 2022. Instead, those duties have been given to a guy who has never played or coached the position before. And it feels pretty likely Petrus and or Padilla will look like quarterbacks trained by a former offensive lineman. So in other words, what he's saying is that we sh- we there is zero hope that Spencer Petrus and Alex Padilla will progress as quarterbacks. And if they do, it's certainly not because of Brian Ferentz. And I tend to agree. I tend to agree. Okay. Brian Ferentz is a football player. So he's knowledgeable about football and he has a basic understanding of quarterbacking. But as far as being a quarterback whisperer and getting more out of Spencer Petrus and Alex Padilla, I don't see it. I don't see it. They probably already do. And it's the most logical explanation for Jones' departure. Part of his rationale for coming back was to improve his NFL stock. By the end of April, it probably became clear that would be a tall task on Iowa's offense. His transfer destination should provide a clearer picture, especially if it's the one at the top of the rumor mill. Another Purdue Hawkeye? Hawkeye Report publisher Tom Kakert. Kakert? A person quite attuned to program comings and goings indicates that Purdue looms as a likely destination for Jones. There we have it right there. Man, that would suck if that happened, guys. That would suck. It really would. It makes a lot of sense, and not just because Jeff Brom is the most creative offensive mind in the Big Ten. Another former Hawkeye receiver, Tyrone Tracy, transferred to Purdue in December. Ferentz's offense completely wasted Tracy's talent. It's pretty telling that is Tyrone Tracy hurt is one of the top entries when you Google his name. Tracy went from 36 receptions for 589 yards and four tubs as a freshman in 2019 to 15 catches for 106 yards last season. Guys, that's crazy. That is a significant drop-off. You mean to tell me Tracy didn't have that same talent last year? Come on, come on. The latter statistic wasn't due to a lack of playing time either. He was among Iowa's snap count leaders at receiver for the early part of the season. A receiver doesn't have to be a diva to get frustrated with a lack of receptions in Brian Ferentz's offense. Just a guy who dreams of a quarterback who can actually get him the ball. One imagines Tracy's first spring in West Lafayette was completely reinvigorating. The buzz is that he'll be playing a major role in Purdue's offense. And in that vein, you can imagine Tracy calling his former teammate and saying, yo, dude, yo, dude, you wouldn't believe how creative this Bromcat is. You got to get over here. You know what I'm saying? Or something like that. As a graduate transfer, Jones is eligible immediately despite entering the portal after the May 1st deadline. Picking Purdue and quarterback Aiden O'Connell O'Connell makes a lot of sense for showcasing his talents. The only downside is that the Boilers host the Hawkeyes. It wouldn't be nice for Tracy and Jones to get rousing. It would be nice for Tracy and Jones to get rousing ovations upon their return to Iowa City. Usually transfers would be booed after leaving town, but it's different in this case. The only guy worth booing for Iowa fans is the one 
calling the plays ineffectively. And that's Brian Ferentz. Now, I've long said, I saw this tweet. I forget who tweeted it. But the tweet basically said that, yes, you can be mad at Brian Ferentz, but ultimately Brian Ferentz is the sous chef and Kirk Ferentz is the head chef. And Brian Ferentz is only preparing the offense or the food like Kirk Ferentz tells him to. And I think there's a lot of truth to that. But, man, this article was so spot on. Uh I also, it was so spot on and I got to be honest, guys, I have zero hope for this offense. Um, I think the most that this offense can hope for is average. If they can be average, they'll be in good shape. And I, and I will settle for average at this point. I really will. I also want to add that Iowa still has a lot of talent in the wide receiver room. I posted this on Facebook. I'm going to pull it up real quick here for you guys. So here we go. This is what I posted. Um, and, and it is important to note this. The wide receiver room does have a lot of talent still. Um, I, I posted, folks, the cupboard is still pretty full and recruiting has been solid at, wide, at the wide receiver position. Arlen Bruce, four-star. Keegan Johnson, four-star. Uh, Brody Brecht, high three-star. Uh, Deontay Vines, high three-star. Jacob Bostic, high three-star. All these guys were majorly recruited. Alex Mata is a four-star according to on three recruiting services and a high three-star by all the other services. So the cupboard is still pretty full. It is. But man, Brian Ferentz, I think he has only one more season to make this happen. And if he doesn't, Iowa is in is in serious trouble, and I think it's going to become harder and harder uh, to recruit the wide receiver position. Um, it's it's going to go back to how it was, you know, in the 2010s, where Iowa could basically only get two and and low, low, low three star wide receivers. I think that's what we're going to go back to if Iowa's offense doesn't show that they can at the ver- at the very least get the ball out to their wide receivers to make some plays. So we'll see. I wanted to share that article. You know, I wouldn't say all hope is lost. Um, but I, you know, generally speaking, I don't think Brian Ferentz, uh, deserved to be promoted. Um, his offenses have been lackluster. Uh, I think it's crazy to believe that the quarterbacks are going to improve because of him. And I think there's a lot of truth to Charlie Jones deciding to bounce because he knows that Brian Ferentz isn't cutting it. And that sucks. That sucks. Not good. All right, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. That's about it. I wanted to share that article. I thought it was a good article. Um, And, you know, I still am very high on this Iowa team as a whole. We'll have to see about the offense. Um, but still very high on this Iowa team as a whole. And I am so grateful for all of you guys' support of this channel. You guys are truly the best fans in the world. Uh, Iowa fans are the best. I love all of you guys. Uh, and make sure to hit that subscribe button because, well, subscribing makes you feel good. At the very least, like, comment, share. Um, I will put the PayPal link in the description and the Cash App. Link in the description if you want to donate to your boy's channel. Uh, And last but not least, DBAP, don't be a pussy willow. In fact, our feelings, because your feelings just don't matter. See you guys next time. Love y'all. Go Hawks. Bye-bye.